Good day everyone. The proof of the tangent secant power theorem. Let me just share with you this quote by Dan Mangan. I think the only thing that we can even have a small tangent of reality or truth about is right now, the moment that is happening right this second. Everything else is up for grabs. So, let us take this moment to learn together and prove the tangent secant power theorem. The theorem states that if a tangent and a secant intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent is equal to the product of the measures of the secant and its external secant segment. Again, what are our clue words that we have to see? There is a tangent, there is also a secant, and this tangent and a secant meet outside of the circle, forming two segments of the secant, the outer and the whole secant. And the relationship that exists? We make use of this figure to prove. Segment BE is a secant, and segment DE is a tangent. What are we supposed to show? We have to show that segment BE multiplied by the segment CE is equal to segment DE squared. BE as the secant, CE as the outer segment of the secant, and DE is the tangent. Let us start by constructing BD, connecting point B and point D. Likewise, constructing segment CD, connecting point C and point D. Again, what allowed us to do this? We have the line postulate that there is exactly one line that can be drawn given points. Having constructed segment BD and segment CD, there are angles, new angles that are formed. Likewise, there are triangles that are formed. Let us see. We can then state that the measure of angle CBD is equal to one half the measure of arc CD. Why did we say this? By the inscribed angle theorem. Let us see, since angle CBD is an inscribed angle as shown, that's our angle CBD, and opposite that angle is arc CD. Again, we repeat, any inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Also, we can state that the measure of angle CDE that angle is equal to half the measure of arc CD. Same, this is the arc CD. Why did we say that? From the tangent chord theorem, it says that the measure of the angle on the circle formed by the chord and the tangent is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc. So, by these two statements, we can see that both angle measures, angles, measure of angle CBD and measure of angle CDE, are equal to the measure of arc CD. So, we can state that the measure of angle CBD is equal now to the measure of angle CDE. That is by transitive property of equality. And also, when angles have the same measure, then they are called also as congruent angles. So we can state that angle CBD is congruent to angle CDE. So we now have here established that one pair of angles are congruent. We also can state that angle E is congruent to angle E. 
by the reflexive property. An angle is equal, is congruent to itself. It is at this moment, it is a little bit difficult to visualize where are the triangles involved in as much as we already have two pairs of angles that are congruent. So let us separate the triangles to clearly see where the congruent parts are. So we have here previously the triangle and uh, the figure with triangles and we have here the angles that are congruent. Let's take the triangle that is the bigger triangle. The one in blue you have triangle BBE or triangle EBD or triangle EBD, EDB. Let us separate that from the figure to clearly see. There you have it. The other triangle is the one in orange. You have triangle CDE. Let us also separate that. Now, it is still a little difficult to see where are the related parts of the triangle. So let us rotate the orange triangle. There you have it. Now we can see that it is easier to take a look at what would be the related parts of these two triangles. Let's mark the angle CBD and the angle CDE, which we have stated to be congruent. There, angle B and angle D. Those two angles are congruent. Likewise, let us mark the angle E on the blue triangle and the angle E on the orange triangle. So we can clearly see in the two triangles that there are two pairs of congruent angles. If that is the case, then we can come up with the conclusion that by the angle-angle similarity theorem on triangles, the triangle DBE, DBE, is similar to triangle CDE. So, since we have established that these two triangles are similar, let us also take a look now at the, uh, the sides relationship. We can say that BE, segment here, divided by DE, segment of the other triangle, is equal to DE, a side of the blue triangle, divided by CE, which is a side of the other triangle. We can say this because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Actually, there's one more ratio that we may include, and that would be the third sides of the two triangles being BD divided by DC. However, we are not including that because we don't need that in the proof. Whatever we are proving is what we need. So that, since we already have here a proportion, one ratio equals another ratio, we can then say we cross multiply BE times CE, DE times DE is DE squared. Again, why did we do that? Let us recall, in a proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Let us put together all our statements and the original figure. There we have it. That BE is a secant and DE is a tangent. And we were asked to show that BE times CE is equal to DE squared. With our statements, we can clearly say that we were able to show correctly that BE times CE, that is, the second segment, multiplied by its outer part segment CE is equal to the square of the tangent. Thus, the proof is complete. Linked also in the description below is an exploratory activity which you may do, so, which you may do in GeoGebra regarding the tangent chord power theorem.
If you have learned something from this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. See you in the next video. Good day, everyone.